you know, guard the fence and be a vigilante ICE agent, but I won't quite murder Mexican people for you. I'm the good guy. And and the fucking and to his credit, the rancher just looks at him and goes, "Well, that's not what I was asking you to fucking do, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite disturbed that that's right where you went. You went straight right. to that. No, it's fine. You don't have to kill him. I mean, you won't hit your bonus. I mean, we talked about the money, but like, <laughs> it's like uh, that's a bitter for me actually. But, you know, just aim for the legs, like the president yeah, says. That's a, be a patriot. Shoot him in the legs, man. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because you haven't fired us yet. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who was not Christian enough? Who's that? Jonathan Rambo. He, <laughs> like, he, he understood Mexican culture and politics. He had nuanced understanding, all that stuff, but not enough faith. Yeah. Not enough faith. We're going to fix that, though. Yeah, it's not often that we dedicate an entire episode to pitching last month's bonus episode, which was <laughs> Rambo Last Blood, but um, they, they happy for accident. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, weirdly defensive happy accident. Like, like Sly Stallone heard last month's bonus episode for patrons and was like, I'll show you who's a racist. David, make a Mexican TV show. And David was like, you got it, Sly. Yeah, we found we found a TV series, a pure flick series of Rambo Last Blood, and we're going to watch them. It's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, that other voice you heard, the, that's coming from 900 miles to my northeast. That's from my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Do you know Jesus? What? Because he has my jacket. He's kind of <laughs> asking everybody Just in this tone going voice. door to door, are you? Yeah, not yeah. really. Uh, not a lot behind the question, as you can tell by my tone. Just, you know. <laughs> If you've seen him, I'm familiar with that. That man, do not have your jacket, please. Move no. on. All right. All right. So tell us, Heath. <laughs> you've already kind of <laughs> explained it in, in, in a general sense, but what exactly will we be breaking down today? We watched Sons <laughs> of Thunder. Yeah, we episode did. one. Again, it's a Pure Flix original series. It's produced by David A.R. White. Get mm. excited. Normally, I do like a quick summary here, but there's. Nothing better than their own description of their own stupid fucking show. Here it is. Quote, combat veteran Simon <laughs> motorcycles across the country, working odd jobs, helping those who God puts in his path and trying to atone for the past sins in a biker club. So, yeah, they did like Rambo Last Blood and Sons of Anarchy plus David R. White made it into a Christian thing. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> Side note, though, and this is my favorite little detail, little piece of trivia. This is not to be confused with Sons of Thunder, <laughs> the TV series from 1999 starring, starring. Chuck fucking Norris. Yes. Uh, which we are also going to be watching. <laughs> yes. <in full. laughs> it's a Walker, Texas Ranger spinoff. And good uh, again, I got to give you their own words. Their own words are too perfect. This is Sons of Thunder, the TV series, I think, on CBS from 1999. Just 1999, to be yeah. clear. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, Detective Carlos Sandoval resigns from the Dallas police after his partner is murdered. He then hooks up with childhood chum Trent Malloy. Love it. That's, that's Chuck Norris, an ex-military martial arts instructor. Together, they decide to form a private investigation business. Trent's brother, Tommy, and ex-cop turned bartender, Butch McMahon, <laughs> help them out from time to time. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> from time to time. That's dude. the show description. That's the literal exact words from their show description. Jesus, you could have just given me the names and I'd have been in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yep. we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, the lead actor from the one we're watching, the one we watched for today, he was actually in Walker, Texas Ranger for a couple episodes. Coming wow. full circle. <laughs> yeah. He played Bull Clayton and Pee Wee Cochran. <laughs> there we go. Now he's Simon the motorcycle nomad guy. So yeah. happy not to have an ironically named character for the first time in his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I don't know. His character is also known as Dozer, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Eli, how bad was this TV show? Well, brother, 
<laughs> if you like the feel of the open road, the wind in your hair, the roar of a hog between your thighs. Um, that sounds lovely, but this is a Christian attempt at not all Mexicans are bad, the TV show, so I got nothing for you. <laughs> I don't know that it's not all Mexicans are bad. I'm not sure that was the message that they were getting. But yeah, but given the fucking combination of gun fetishes, fear mongering and Harleys, this probably should have been called 30 to 50 feral hogs. (laughs) All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would. I'm going to go with best worst. Everything I wrote down as a joke turned into the actual plot. (laughs) Yes, sir, it did. Constantly. So many times I was like, wow, that was racist. Like, they might as well start hunting Mexican people. And they're literally hunting hunting Mexican people. What the fuck? (laughs) I can't make jokes like this. This is impossible. All right. So I was going to swing back to their own descriptions as well, but not for the series, but for the episode itself. I was going to go with best worst nasal descriptor. Okay. I know that's a weird one, right? But <laughs> I know the, where you're going. With okay, this. good, I good. I saw this too. I almost read out this whole quote. I'm so happy you're putting this in here. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm not going to read you the whole thing because I didn't write it down, but it's pretty amazing. In the episode description on Pure Flix, they described the rancher character in this movie <laughs> as stiff nosed. What? Pretty fucking sure that's not a saying. And. Google seems to agree with me. It's not familiar with it either. So I'm thinking they're halfway between stiff-necked and hard-nosed, but couldn't decide or some. Anyway, yeah, stiff-nosed. What if oh. he's got like a, a medium soft nose, his neck? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> maybe it's Sorry. a nose sex thing and I just don't get it. I Maybe. Well, Texans you definitely don't get it. <laughs> proud about the lack of nose Placidity in their <laughs> and see, I'm kind of stealing from Heath's here, and I will not spoil this, but best worst rescue denouement. Again, <laughs> we will get to it, but I paused the movie to howl with laughter throughout the entire last three <laughs> minutes of this episode. Oh. I could not tell you what happens in the last three minutes of this show with a goddamn gun to my head because of this denouement. <laughs> so amazing. That might as well have been happening in the denouement, just like Eli with the gun to his head next to what was happening. Laughing. It would have fit right yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Equ- Equally reasonable. All right. Well, we've got a lot of main character to talk about on the other side of this break. So we're going to need a minute to ramp up for it. But when we come back, we'll break down all the Trump campaign ad that is Sons of Thunder, episode one. Guys, mail's here. Coming. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Mail, mail, Eli, Eli, your shave box. Nice. And your anime box. Of course. And, of course, your anime shave box. Nice. Need it, need it, need it. Heath, you got a death threat from your dad. He remembered. All right. Uh, Just let me get my hand truck from my room, and I'll get these boxes upstairs. Eli, if you like cool stuff so much, why don't you just try Box of Awesome by Bespoke Post? What's... Box of Awesome by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly aged winter cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. Like right now, they have a box called Gastronomy that's got a super cool molecular gastronomy kit. Or brew, which teaches you how to brew your own beer. Ooh, those do sound cool. Plus, they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Wow, that sounds great. How do I sign up? Well, you get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code AWFUL for 20% off your first box. All right, guys, I'm in. So, so your dad just sent you a death threat? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Is this joke we have? Is, is 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 the joke that he just sends you death threats? It. Yes. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first ever writers' meeting for the Pure Flix original series, Sons of Thunder. Hooray! Heck yeah, Dave. Whoa, whoa. What? 
What happened? Dave, this show might be about bad sass bikers, but there is no need for HEC triple hockey sticks, okay? Huh? Uh, sorry, HEC triple hockey sticks? Yeah, what? you know what you said, Dave. Yeah. Yep. Heck? <gasps> so, that, okay, you did mean, you did mean heck. Wow. Uh, also, sorry, did you say bad sass bikers dude, just now? Dude. Sorry. Seriously. Sorry. Okay. J I won't say that again, nor will I say H E C triple hockey sticks again. Wow. Okay. That's more All like right. it. All right. So, uh, what do we think of for the first episode? Okay, so you know how all Mexicans are either rapists and kidnappers or victims of rapists and kidnappers? Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. Yes, I, I do. I yep. do. Go on. <laughs> Great. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, D done. Yeah. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a motorcycle and a narrator that wasn't always such a clean, crut Christian <laughs> and so, so we're gonna start with we get like the series of like bikery thing clips. We don't see him right away, but we see like his leather biker jacket and his biker shoes and his you know whatever. We see all of that first, and his like baseball batting gloves that he will not take off for this entire episode yeah. for mm -hmm. some yep. reason. No, I was really hoping for a scene where he bathed in them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite certain he did somewhere on the set. He also had the chain wallet, and then mm -hmm. and then he pulled. I was I was so confused by this. Did he pull out a fanny pack? <laughs> right oh, after that? no, that is his teeny tiny backpack. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, we'll get to the teeny tiny backpack here in a second. So yeah, so he's he pulls up at this suburban house. He walks up. We see the dude himself. His fucking beard looks like it should be hanging off of an oak tree in an antebellum plantation. He looks. Right? <laughs> That's a, that's a Spanish moss joke, by the way, not a lynching joke. I just want to be clear on that. Oh, that's good. That's a good clarity. <laughs> he looks like someone turned a troll doll upside down. Yeah. Yeah. He, lo he looks like he's in the middle of eating Dr. Albert E. Wiley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we there, there's like a poster image. If you press pause on this oh, thing, God. there's like the background yes. poster image. And it's very upsetting. It's uh, I, you know, got it right away. I hadn't even started watching the episode yet. And I was like, OK, it's a it's a white power lawn gnome holding yep. a rifle with a scope. <laughs> That's interesting. Like, like if black people have lawn gnomes to make fun of white people, they look like this guy. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, at one point, my wife came in to ask me something and I paused the movie and we she looked at that image and I looked at it and I went. Yeah, no, that encapsulates. That's not what's going on in the movie, but that perfectly encapsulates this film. <laughs> That's right what's there. going on. Yep, that is what's going on. <laughs> so, okay. And we should probably mention, by the way, that this is an enormous gentleman and not in an intentional, I meant to be this big kind of way. Right? No, in an Eli Bosnick after his 30s kind of way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like you started to say, Heath, that's, you can combine it all together. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't back away from it. I used try to, be to able to. Now out. you're weird, thin, Heath. Yeah, right. No, you actually Big got head. thinner in your 30s. That would fuck the whole damn joke up. But yeah. Top of your skinny body. So, and, and the narrator's oh, like, you know, I, I left the, my <laughs> sinful ways and became a good Christian biker, and I'm trying to right the only wrong that I can. And as he's saying that, he walks up to this dude's door, he knocks on the door. And it's just some random guy there. And he's like, hey, are you, is this, is this your backpack? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was the fanny pack, though. That was the thing. He's holding yes. the thing that I thought was the fanny yeah. pack, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's, it could not be more cartoonishly, childishly silly, right? It's got the little wacky Jesus cartoon on it. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it was something different. I thought, like, maybe I saw a fanny pack and now he's like, hello, sir, is this your silly Jesus lunchbox that I have. <laughs> I so wanted that to be the one wrong that he could write was that like he kept that weird Jesus door of the Explorer backpack one time and he probably should have <laughs> given it to the lost and found. Yeah. Oh. What happened in your biker gang that you were like stealing lunchboxes from kids? <laughs> and now later you're giving them back. What? I hope we get that backstory eventually. Yeah, well, he says, he, you know, he asked the guy, he's like, hey, are, are you named Mike Brayton? He's like, yes, I am. He's like, is this your fucking weird Jesus backpack? He's like, nope, never seen that before. And then he goes, do you know Jesus? <laughs> the, guy's, the guy's answer is, this is the greatest for the rest of my life. This is right away my answer. He goes, you know Jesus? And the guy's like, I do not. And he closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> the <fuck is> <laughs> Polite but firm. 
polite yeah. but firm. Yeah. Right. And this is the the like mission of the show, right? Is that we're supposed to, we don't know why, and spoiler, we will not find out why, but he's searching for a guy named Mike Brighton. It's my name is Earl, but with Jesus. So yep. is your name Mike? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's searching for a, a Mike who lost a silly Jesus lunchbox somehow. <laughs> And he's been riding for like years around the country doing this, according to this little monologue he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, God sure is fucking mysterious. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm supposed to, this clearly pays off huge. I, it's not happened yet though. I don't know. I guess I keep going. So, and then there's this great moment where he like sits down on his bike and he's just like, all right, Jesus, where to next? And then <laughs> waits for a fucking answer. It's the greatest. He actually says, Lord, where should I go next? Giant pause. 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. All right. I'll pick again. It's a, it's cool. It's cool. I, I ask you a lot. You never <laughs> really fine. wanted him to keep going. Are you mad? You're mad. <laughs> <laughs> you do care where we eat, though, because sometimes you, you don't pizza? like the place that I, just, I mean, I, so. I, I, I usually get pizza. I feel like you don't just say whether you want it or not or else. <laughs> it's gonna lead. It's gonna be like a big thing that builds, and eventually, <laughs> you would just like a straw. And I have to point this out too. Like, how is it that bikers think they look badass? They have watched each other back up before, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. There's there's no way the to greatest. ruin the mood of what they're trying to go for than this very large gentleman being like, up, up, up. These things <laughs> fall over really easily. So. <laughs> so <laughs> Good. He's just like, all right, God, I'm going to strike out on your journey again. Hold on. Hold on. I just got to back it. I'm Let back. me waddle Burr. this thing Looking back. for adventure. Yeah. Back it. Hold on. Shut. Uh, I turned on Born to be Wild too early. Uh, I need to back it out for five more minutes. It takes a long time. So. It's already. All right. I got to pick a different song. It's done. It's done. <laughs> All right, so a title screen later, we're into the show proper. This character, his name is Simon, by the way, the large biker guy. Simon is just chilling out. He's reading his Bible in the glaring fucking sun. With his finger. With his fucking finger. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a fucking toddler. Yes. Like, well, Got to keep the finger so I don't lose my place. Yeah, exactly. So he's reading a book with his finger and a truck full of Mexicans show up. So, you know, they're bad guys. And they are right. Like, I'm not just. Yeah, they are. They are. And again, hate to plug the bonus episode twice in, in the same show. But these two actors did go to the Sly Stallone acting school of Hispanic head tilting. So <laughs> it's important, important to point out. Yeah, they did. All the way with the weird, all the way back to like these, these guys, they're from like uh, a Nazi propaganda poster about Mexican. Yes. <laughs> all right. So th- these two Mexican guys come up and they're like, hey, love your bike. We want to buy it. And he's like, I ain't going to sell it. They're like, we want to buy it anyway. I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to kill his dog, aren't they? This is going to turn <laughs> into fucking John 316 Wick, isn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> John Three Wickstein. Three yes. Wickstein. We'll go with Three Wickstein. Nice. That's Turbo's where John man. Wick's Jewish. John Wickstein. What? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I hate to bother you, but did you kill my dog? <laughs> oh. I'm just, I'm so upset with you. You killed my dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> Every time I see someone who knows you, I tell them that you killed my dog. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm John Wickstein. <laughs> All right. So- <laughs> No, okay. So at, at this point, too, while they're arguing, a ginger dude walks out of the store and needs to leave, but they're blocking him in with their truck. So now he's in the fight, too. <laughs> it escalates so quickly, too. This guy just he walks out, and this is this is so badly depicted. It's this look, white guy just asking them very nicely, yep. "Can you move your truck so I can leave? kill white people <laughs> yeah. like right away." <laughs> Out right. of nowhere, there's guns are pulled that, at that moment. Yeah, well, and the other guy pulls a gun on Simon the biker, right? He's like, you won't sell me your bike? Well, how about now? Pulls out his gun. Like, how does that lead to a sale? 
Right? Is there a fucking scenario in this guy's head where, where fucking Simon sells him his motorcycle at gunpoint? Oh. oh, God. How good would this TV show be if there was just a flash cut to them signing paperwork? Okay. And yeah, there is the right, title. going down to the title and license place. Uh, do you need me to this sign is this as is. GMV? This is as is. That's clear, right? <laughs> we said that. <laughs> also, by the way, when this gun gets pulled, Simon, the, the main character of this show, is very clearly in the script supposed to immediately like go into a badass like fight thing, but he doesn't because he is living in slow motion in the world <laughs> oh. and as an actor. So this guy playing the Mexican thug guy is like, uh, I'm pointing this gun at you now in case mm -hmm. maybe you didn't see. Did you maybe have a physical reaction you to that? To Dude, like honestly, reacting mm. too late to something could be his entire character descriptor, right? <laughs> but but eventually he does spring into action. The choreography here is just y'all hold still while I beat you up, right? Well, <laughs> he just like very slowly like pushes the gun hand away. Yep, and then also way long after that punches the guy. <laughs> And it's he might so as well funny. do the Popeye wind up before he punches it, right? <laughs> he has to get reminded at each step. He's like, okay, so you've, you've pushed my gun away. Did you want to punch me in the face? No, I got it. I got it. Please don't help me. I know what I'm doing. I'm building a moment. Do you want to put down the shake weight before you punch me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so he punches the guy that pulls the gun on him. The other guy, meanwhile, is still like, I don't know, trying to steal the, the ginger dude's shoes or something. I have no idea what they're doing over there. But Simon comes over <laughs> and rescues him, too. Yeah. And he does the big, like, he, he comes up behind the guy and, like, grabs him by, by like, the scruff of the neck like a kitten was going to just relax out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And then he smashes him, like, his entire body into the truck. Like the side of it, and it's just like smushy, smush, 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 smush. And the guy's like, all right, I guess this would incapacitate me. I don't know. Fine. So, okay. So then we cut to Biker Dude giving the police a statement about this altercation. And the cop explains, like, who that kid is and why the his Mexican guys wanted to fuck with him specifically. Apparently, his dad owns a big chunk of land by the border, and he built a big fence along it that he patrols himself. So. We know who he votes for. Normal. Normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the cop goes like, uh, yeah, I love this line so much. The cop goes, there are kidnappings along the border all the time. Cartels, coyotes. I'm like, why? Why would the <laughs> gangs, like kidnapping gangs? Really? He goes, uh, retribution. I'm like, all right, you've run out of groups and just started throwing out motivations now. Uh, Come on. Malice. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, I, I have more words about Mexicans. And, <laughs> uh, head tilting. <laughs> okay, so, that was it. That no, was it. <laughs> oh, no, drug dealer rapist. Drug dealer rapist. Graffiti. Somebody's doing the raping, right? Yep. Right? Right? Taco truck on the corner. Look. Look at it. I mean, I'm going to get one, but like, look at it. So, but yeah, so the cop leaves. Opie thanks Jesus Biker. And he says, hey, you don't happen to have a, a job you could hire me for for the duration of this episode, do you? He says, I do. Actually, I well, do. So happens. And it's so awkward because he's like, hey, if I can ever do anything to thank you. And he's like, employ me. And he's like, oh, um, that's a longer term thank than most people will. Would I join my condo association? Oh, <laughs> that's a lot. So, mm. But luckily, though, it just so happens that Opie does have work for a gigantic biker. He's like, yeah, my dad owns a ranch and, and he's always hiring random <laughs> bikers. So for, come with for me. For folding money. So yeah. perfect. There you go. <laughs> this lines up. So they get back to the ranch, and immediately we know that dad is physically abusive to this poor kid. He hates him so much, <laughs> and it will never change. Because it, it's so beautiful, right? It's the viewpoint, right? They're like, oh, he's a tough dad. But unlike all the other TV shows where, like, the dad softens or the son and the father <laughs> have some kind of, like, you know, reconciliation. No, nope, yep. not in Christian cinema. He's just mm, like, no. fuck you, son. I hate you. Why are you late? <laughs> Yeah, he goes, so good. the dad goes, why are you late? And the son goes, well, Mexicans tried to kidnap me, dad. I just didn't even ask how I was. And I'm like, 
because in the, in the in the show description, that's what they say happens too. I'm I watched this happen. <laughs> Did, are we saying that those Mexicans were trying to kidnap that guy? Is that what was going on there? I think they were trying to buy a motorcycle. Yeah, and that's then what a I got. Crime happened against them. <laughs> that's how I viewed that situation. But no, this kid's just like Mexicans tried to kidnap me. God, he's all <laughs> for the rest of the movie. It's the best. And then the dad's like. Okay, uh, we'll circle back to that. I think you're lying, but uh, fine. <laughs> Mexicans tried to kidnap you. But then why is it like, and then you fucked ZZ Top here? Yeah, what right. the fuck happened? <laughs> why, why is this guy here? He's like, he needs a job. So the dad turns to him, he goes, all right, well, I, I hire ranch hands all the time. It pays $100 a day plus room and board. <laughs> plus, wow. Plus a, plus a generous bounty. Commission, generous <laughs> commission to guard Wait, my wall along sorry. Mexico. He pays a hundred dollars a day plus free room and board. Welcome to Bernie Sanders Ranch. What the fuck? Kind yeah, of job no, is I, I, I did the back of the envelope. That's about forty grand a year, depending on how good they feed you. So pretty good work if you can get it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, but you gotta save my son. Everyone yeah. else makes the traditional three cents a day and owes yeah. me money for no. sleeping here. Right. Yeah. You'll need to be a white, gritty Christian biker to get this job. <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right, so while he's out ranch handing, he wakes up a Mexican girl who secretly spent the night on the ranch. So she runs away before anyone can see her, but she forgot her, I don't know, fucking Hello Kitty phone cover thing. This is it's, such a weird yeah. item to make a MacGuffin of. It's so big. They have no idea what refugees have and don't have and dress like. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So they went with cell phone case as an important thing. And like, yeah, this is supposed to be like a serious thing. This is a refugee trying to like flee something terrible and cross the border. Mm -hmm. But the tone of this moment is so silly and dumb in this TV show because she like she goes back and then she like angrily runs back out of her little like hideout like she's late for work yeah she, that's the tone of it she's just <laughs> like ugh, ugh. now i'm gonna get a different slight the train it's on a different thing now <laughs> well, also, <sighs> fucking what time of day is it right because like we met these people they were in town and then there was the kidnapping shit the dad said the kid was two hours late and now he went to work after that was she outdoors sleeping till 11 a.m.? What the fuck is going on here? She really had a lie in. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, what the fuck? I set you for three alarms. I have to cross the border. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you get to take self-care days during your trip across the border. I but wanted maybe... to stop for an Egg McMuffin. Now there's not even time. <laughs> God damn it. I knew I should not have brought my Echo Dot with me. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So now they uh, they go back. He's done, he's been out ranch handing all day, I guess. And now the stiff nosed rancher would like to have a scene with him <laughs> in front of a bunch of disembodied deer heads, where he can demand Simon's backstory. Yeah, right? but all using improper pluralizations. Like this whole scene is just him being like, "I hear you done that pretty good. I never yeah. thanked you for what you done." <laughs> The whole time I'm expecting Noah to pop out of a trash can and just be like, well, you took the cogs apart pretty well. <laughs> I loved the um, the main character. What's his name? Simon. Simon yeah, walks Simon. in here. And yeah, Mr. Sterling, the, the big rancher guy, stiff nosed, of course. Maybe it relates to the stiff nose. He's just like playing with his antler collection that he has on this table. <laughs> yes. I guess. Look at all that stuff I killed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Simon walks in and immediately Mr. Stern is like, where are you from? I will not look away from my antlers while we talk, <laughs> by the way. Right. And, yeah. and Simon's like, OK, OK. Um, All right. We're doing a no look conversation. That's, that's cool. <laughs> I will go opposite wall, I guess. Um, <laughs> So I'm from nowhere, got no family, but. I was reading the Bible says you're technically my dad now because I beat up Mexicans to help your son. That's in the book. Just so you know. And that's the plot of this, right? That's like what that's kind of. Yeah. What happens yeah. now? Yeah. So, yeah. So the guy offers him a drink. He says, no, I'll just have a water. I'm all the way Christian. He's like, good, good. Actually, it's going to be sweet tea because we're in, in Texas. You want some sweet tea and then a square dance and then to fuck your sister. <laughs> 
Good. We hit our demographic. Good. Move on. Yeah. It's so good. It's supposed to be like this badass moment. They're trying to characterize this stiff nosed Texan rancher. And he's like, what you drinking? And before the guy can, before Simon can even say, he's like, we drink sweet tea in these parts. And yeah. <laughs> okay. You couldn't have had like a whiskey out. I don't know. <laughs> or even just an unsweet tea, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, so, but then he starts explaining, the, the rancher starts explaining to Simon that he's alone out here in the ranch, just him and his son, because his wife left him on account of she didn't like, and he starts dancing around just saying Mexicans, <laughs> right? Like, because that's certainly what he's implying. <laughs> right. And also, he's not happy that Jake is still there. He's like, yeah, my wife left me and took the kids, except for Jake, who stayed for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Jake. <laughs> well, and then fucking Simon goes, well, you know, the Bible says the guy's like, God damn it. Well, you're going to, are you going to fucking quote the Bible every time I talk to you? And I'm like, I like this guy. <laughs> He's I, like, I, 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 maybe I'm stiff nosed. That could be it. <laughs> I also, I love how dumb people sound when they try to quote the book. Cause there's no, there's nothing good in the Bible, right? There are never, there's never a good appropriate quote. So it's always just some kind of like florid fucking words that don't really apply to the situation and certainly don't mean anything. Yes. Uh, you yeah. know, the Bible says, yea be to he who walks among the thistles. What? <laughs> do you have nice to thistles Mexicans. here? Is that helpful right now? Well, no. No. Can we just agree that the Bible, like that Jesus kind of generally would disagree with the Republican Party about refugees? Hey, fuck you, cuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because he doesn't say that. He immediately turns to his son and he's like, you see that? You see that, son? That's how real men disagree mildly and with literally no stakes because we're both white. <laughs> Well, and of course, this is the way because the, because the guy is basically saying like you know hereabouts we take care of white people we don't worry about Mexicans and Simon goes well I think that we're all the Lord's children and then the TV show itself turns to Eli and says see we're not racist anymore now it's woke the whole thing it's woke now motherfucker huh? what do you think of that <laughs> and the look on the son's face here is great too right after this like nonsense where two guys completely disagree on their politics and in Texas and they're both like, okay, well, you know what? Um, let's both, uh, let's both regroup and think about these things and see if we can get to a better place with our opinions. And the son's just like, what the fuck is happening? This is nonsense. <laughs> well, and again, because it's the wonderful gift of doing this show is getting to watch the world through Christian eyes because this is what they think political disagreement should be, right? Right. One person <laughs> should advocate genocide. The other person should say no. Agree it's to disagree. But, respect but respectfully say no. Yes. Respectfully right. agree to disagree about genocide. That was productive. What? <laughs> I mean, I didn't have to change my mind or do anything or even really consider your point, but that was productive because I didn't have to feel in the feely parts <laughs> because you made me think with the think top top. Yep. Yep. You see that, Simon, with your goddamn Facebook page? <laughs> you have to unblock me. I'm your dad. <laughs> So, yeah, so with that all wrapped up, uh, the, the son turns to Simon. And he goes, all right, eh, that's the end of that scene. Let's go haze some cows. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so I heard that correctly. Hey, some cow. That's a verb yep. you can do to a cow. You can okay. hay a cow. So I immediately that assumed thing? that they were all going to go to a grocery store with a bunch of cows and go, hey, hey. <laughs> I you guys don't remember that? We did that. Sh we did that movie. No. <laughs> Together. All right. That's fine. All right. Well, the main character just pointed out that in addition to rapists and murderers, some of them are very fine people, and that's the closest to woke that we ever get. So we're going to pause on that high <laughs> note, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Sons of Thunder. Hello. Welcome to Typical Fancy Butcher Experience. How may I judge you? Hey, um, yeah, I'm looking for high quality meat. At affordable prices. Ooh, so you signed up for ButcherBox. No, uh, I came here. What's 
Butcher Box. Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones. Plus, each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals. It's packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum sealed so it stays that way. You can customize your box or go with one of theirs. Either way, you get exactly what you want. Okay. And what do you have here? Oh, uh, here we have very expensive meat you don't want to eat. Um, can I interest you in some mouse sweetbreads? They're on sale for just what? all the money you've ever made. Or perhaps you'd like to try our goose bacon. Mm. It's mostly beak. Nope, no, no, not not that stuff. Just out of curiosity, what kind of meat does ButcherBox have? 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage pork, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and sugar and nitrate-free bacon. See, now that sounds amazing. Oh, it is. And right now, ButcherBox is offering new members ground beef for life. That's two pounds of ground beef in every box for the life of their subscription, plus $20 off their first box. Wait, if I sign up for ButcherBox, I get free ground beef for life? Indeed. But do they have yak vocal cords? Because we... Have yak vocal cords. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds delicious. But the butcher box thing. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Just go to butcherbox.com slash awful or enter promo code awful at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash awful or enter promo code awful at checkout. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go for a second. I, I just, I left something in my car. Are you sure I can't tempt you with a sample of squirrel fears? I mean, a free sample, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Huh. Yeah. Tastes nutty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a squirrel fear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say your name was again? Uh, Biker Mike. Well, Mike, welcome to Final Stand Ranch. This is my son, Timmy. I hate him. Hi. Sorry. You what? Oh, I hate him with a fiery passion of a rebel army. His mother left me and took the whole family, but nobody wanted Timmy, so he just kind of mm. still lives here, I guess. Um, okay. Would you care for some sweet tea? Yeah, sure. That, that sounds, you see that, Timmy? That good. That's how you accept an offer of sweet tea, like a man. Like a man's man. Sure, none of this yes shit you bandy about like Oscar Wilde on an ether bender. Yes, yes, Papa. God, you sound like a fucking Eugene O'Neill character. I hate you so much. Uh, I should probably just go. I feel no, like please personal. don't like let him ruin thing. this moment. So what brings you to this neck of the woods? Uh, okay, well, yeah, I I'm looking to find Who's maybe... Um, hey, Timmy, I will slay you where you stand, you empty I've... sack of man. You, you, you soulless homunculus. Okay. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to open up on Simon laying in his bed, leafing through his Bible. <laughs> yeah. A little tiny picture of his tragic backstory in there. Yeah, the, okay, this is a flashback, right? Yeah, so I, I just wanted to put, because like, he pulls out this picture, this little tiny picture of, of the girl that he's going to pine for. And I assumed that like she had been killed and he was going to avenge her, because that's usually when you see the little picture like that. And I had this mm -hmm. like really weird moment where I realized I don't have any tiny little pictures of Lucinda. Right, so if she ever gets taken out by terrorists, I am entirely unqualified to avenge her. Yeah, you got to oh, get some, man. man. Right, got to get a get into it. Got to get a blood feud locket. Just yeah, have it right, ready right, yeah, exactly. Put it exactly. in a go bag, you know, it's like right. some with passport some photos. knives and some. <laughs> yeah, like weaponry. one of those little booths. We need to go to one of those little booths. That would do the trick. Yeah, some mm -hmm. power bars. So <laughs> you're gonna be out in the woods. You're gonna be setting up Rambo stuff. You know, you, never you, know. you, you yeah. don't want to eat at a certain point. Yeah. All right, so, but that all leads to the flashback of the extraordinarily mild circumstances under which he and this woman parted company. Yeah, and <laughs> the opening of this will be her walking in on him hiding something, and it's so awkward, right? She comes in, she's like, what are you doing? He's like, nothing, wasn't fucking a banana peel. Was just... <laughs> you weren't? Nope. That was specific. What? <laughs> Crazy. No, I'm just never. Yeah. I want you to know. And I'm I, never okay. fucking a banana. You peel. used the microwave for like 10 seconds, I noticed. What was mm. that? Hot pocket. Hot pocket? 10 second hot pocket? Me mm -hmm. Medium warm pocket. I like them cold. You like them a little bit uh, just iced on the inside still? Yeah, it's like a meat popsicle. 
Cool. <laughs> you also fuck the hot pocket? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is Vanessa Angel, by the way, which made me very excited. She plays his uh, uh, wife, I guess. Yeah, I looked at her IMDb page to try to figure out where the hell you knew her from, and I still couldn't. Yeah, she, she's in real stuff, uh, including playing. She's in. Uh, I Shura thought Hush. you meant a movie called Real Stuff. Honestly, like I was just like, <laughs> that's how unfamiliar I, or, I was with her stuff. She was in like the Weird Science TV show or yep, something. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw that he knew who this actress was, and I wrote in my notes, I wonder which episode of Saved by the Bell she was in the background of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was in Spies Like Us, and she was in Kingpin. She's the, she was like, in the Spies main... Like Us. Yeah. Who was she? Spies like us. Forget the character name. Okay. Uh, but she was she's the main love interest in Kingpin. She's the like Oh the, okay. the big sex symbol character in Kingpin. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So this is the one that looks at this movie and cries the <laughs> hardest. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and and we learned that he's gotta leave because he got in a fight down at the biker club and he hurt Ringo really, really bad. So yep. just to be clear. There's a guy in a biker gang named Ringo. Ringo. We will meet him later. <laughs> so he's like, you know, Ringo's pretty upset and I've got to run off and like, I'm basically, I'm going to need a, a whole TV show at this point, probably. And just then a motorcycle <laughs> pulls up and the two actors react to it so goddamn late. So late. <laughs> Or like we're, we we the audience are going, you guys, you, that that's that's gonna be Ringo, right? Like at the oh right right Ringo at the door, <laughs> fuck. That motorcycle's for you. Oh shit, right motorcycle, right. Yeah. And so she's like, <laughs> I'll do, don't you go out there. I know how it'll get violent if you go out there. I'll talk him down. She's like, but he's too tough. And she's like, no, I'll handle it. End of flashback, right? Because they knew they had to leave on a cliffhanger, and I guess that's what they thought they had done right there. <laughs> All right, so then it's, I guess, in the middle of the night, Mr. Stiff Nose Sterling wakes him up and says, all right, we're, we're going to send you out on early morning Mexican patrol. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is the best worst I'm talking about right here. He's literally being like, yep, go out and, you know, check my border wall that I've made and yep. <laughs> capture... Mm, alive, dead, whatever. capture Mexican people is what I'm asking you to do right yeah, now. And I was like, check the fucking Mexican traps. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, Simon is the, supposed to be Christian. So he's like, um, I'll, you know, guard the fence and be a vigilante ice agent, but I won't quite murder Mexican people for you. I'm the good guy. That's, that's what's happening here. I won't kill people. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and the fucking and to his credit, the rancher just looks at him and goes, "Well, that's not what I was asking you to fucking do, man. I'm, I'm quite disturbed that that's right where you went. You went straight right. to that. No, it's fine. You don't have to kill him. I mean, you won't hit your bonus. I mean, we talked about the money. But like, <laughs> that's, fine. Uh, that's a bitter for me, actually. But you know, just aim for the legs, like the president yeah, said. There you like, go. Be a patriot. Shoot him in the legs, man. Yeah, yeah. And to be clear, when he says I won't kill anybody, that does not mean I won't shoot anybody. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. What moral landscape are they navigating in the Pure Flix audience where this scene was necessary yeah. and useful? <laughs> Insane. He literally, he's like, bring him in alive. And I was just like, I can't make jokes. I can't make jokes. If yeah. you just literally. I can't work like this. <laughs> I know. And then he says, I, the, the rancher guy, he says, I don't want the attorney general knocking on my door. And I was Thinking to myself at this point, this is Texas. Ken Paxton would show up with a fucking Medal of Honor for you. So yeah. I that it's a non sequitur. No shit. All right. So Simon and, and the ginger kid, the son, they go, they set out at sunrise looking for Mexicans. And <laughs> this is an amazing scene. The ginger kid turns to Simon and says, so you ever killed a man? Which is a <laughs> weird starter. Right? That's a weird icebreaker. It's a weird start. <laughs> really wanted Simon to pause for a super long time and be like, no. But if you want to tell your if you want to tell your killing people story, just tell your killing people story. Don't act like you have a question if you're not interested. Don't pretend you want to hear my killing people story. <laughs> well, th that's almost what happens, though. He asks Simon, he's like, you ever kill anyone? And we get a giant pause. 
But then we go back to the kid, and he's just like, wow, so definitely yes. Yeah, right, cool. right. I, are cool. you pleading the fifth over there? Okay. So, yeah, but then the ginger kid talks about the first time he ever done killed a Mexican. Right? Or, or almost, right? Or, or, well, I don't know. They, they never resolve whether or not this is, the, this is either the story of the first time he killed a Mexican or a story about that time that nothing happened. And this is like... This story is like a not racist and a racist got to write every other word <laughs> of this kid's flashback. Right? And then the racist had final cut and did the edit. Also. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Because the story is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, him and his father come across three men who are so desperate and starving that they're eating a rabbit with the fur on. Yeah. And then... Those desperate, starving refugees in the middle of the desert attack them with a machete. Yes, yes, yeah, that, that, that's what happens. And yeah, you're you're correct to identify that this is like a very sad refugee situation that they're describing. But the tone of the story being told is like, yeah, so me and my vigilante ice team, we're patrolling. We see some Mexicans almost starving. They got like one rabbit. This is a classic story. This is a classic story. <laughs> You're going to love this. Nowhere, it's hilarious. Fucking starving Mexicans. Try, one's beating up my dad out of nowhere. One of them had a machete. Uh, pretty sure it was Danny Trejo, actually. I, I, actually, I was attacked by Danny Trejo, I'm pretty sure. The Hollywood actor. <laughs> by the way, he describes the gentleman who comes at him with a machete as, quote, Total loco like. Yes. Yep. Those are the exact words he used. Donut chain now. Um, and then he and he says at at one point in this conversation, he's like, "Yeah, you know, the guy's coming at me with a machete, so I start shooting at the ground to scare him off, right? <laughs> you know, like a raccoon. Yes. <laughs> like you know, like a good guy does. I try to calm him down by firing my gun near yes! him. Right, yeah, exactly. But he's being a dick about that, and he keeps trying to attack me. I don't know what happened. This is, this is a, it's a cultural difference. I'm not saying one is better, but one's better. Yeah, that motherfucker didn't even dance. And and then he goes, he says at one point, he goes, my dad, now, I'll be honest, my dad done told me before not to shoot Mexicans. It's like weird that he would specify a nationality. <laughs> Well, he said, don't shoot Mexicans unless you have to. Yep. Right. That's exactly right. normal. Normal conversation. By the way, he does make that worse, by the way, because he's like, I'm shooting the ground near him, but he keeps coming for me. And I swear to God, the character goes, you know, now that I think about it, he might not have spoken English. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just shooting a gun at him. Oh, that's why he kept coming for me because I was armed and shooting at him. I started doing, you know, Morse code with the gunshots, but he didn't understand that either. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know Mexican sign language. I don't know. And then in the most self-aware moment this TV show will have, he stops and goes, you want to know the ending of my story or are you also bored by this TV show? <laughs> <laughs> and Simon doesn't want to know. No. He's like, no, man, I, I really don't care how this resolves. Mm. And he's like, all right, all right, well, I'll stop. It. Is the end of the story you're still here hunting Mexicans? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, and I'm part of that story now? We all know how it ends Great. then. So shut the fuck up. Great. And then I asked you, have you ever killed anybody? And you paused for a really long time. And then I started to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also. <laughs> by the way, part of the end of this story that he does tell, he's like, yeah, so my dad complimented my trigger discipline later that day. Mm -hmm. And then he he might as well turn to camera and just be like, that's right. I had good trigger discipline <laughs> whilst hunting Mexican people. You're welcome, Mexico. Yeah, very You're important to have good trigger welcome. discipline when you hunt Mexicans. Yeah, another weird addition on this where he, like, he tries to humanize it a little and says, and weirdest thing is the whole time I was thinking to myself, gross, I wouldn't want to eat rabbit. <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, what kind of sauce would work for that rabbit? Is that weird? No, it's not. I was too. <laughs> <laughs> Same. All right. So then out of nowhere, we randomly jump back into that flashback from earlier. <laughs> like they get sucked through it. Yeah. Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, so when we last left off, she was going to the door to talk to Ringo, right? To talk him down. Now, Noah and Heath, you're going to have to help me with what happened in this scene because the character of Ringo, the actor <laughs> who plays him, his eyebrows 
are drawn on in Sharpie marker. <laughs> so I was literally, physically unable to see or hear anything else for 24 straight hours. <laughs> Eyebrows were like fucking Cthulhu. <laughs> aggressive, aggressive <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah. All right. So let me tell you guys something amazing about this character. Okay. This actor, his name isn't exactly Jordan Dragon King, but it isn't exactly not Jordan Dragon King either. This actor's name, according to IMDb, is Maverick Von Hogg. What? That's okay. the actor's name. <laughs> <laughs> Not Here's even the spelled. question. It'd be like both Maverick and Hog misspelled, obviously. <laughs> I have six dollars. Heath, you have six dollars. <laughs> Can we get a Maverick Von Hog Jordan, Jordan Dragon, Dragon King, King buddy cop movie um, going? We you could get them both on, on a fucking we, uh, we could get them both on a holding contract for the next decade if we want to. <laughs> We can sign him to a fucking 14 movie MCU Sebastian Stan contract <laughs> for six bucks. We could probably yeah. do some really good porn with them, too. Yes. <laughs> I agree. A couple of attractive men. And Ringo's message here, right? It's the threatening, like, if you see him, let me know. But he's like, Simon has something of ours. And I just wanted him to be like, it's it's a big bag of meth. So <laughs> like a trash bag. If you see filled. it, just toss it in the lost and found. Again, <laughs> big, big bag of meth. You know what? Big is probably hard for you to sort of judge about this. You know what? If drop any bags of meth you come across <laughs> down at the bar, and we'll just would appreciate it. Oh, and, and I'm sorry, which bar should he drop it up? Well, why the bar on the corner of Fifth Street? <laughs> and huh. what? <laughs> like I said, if there's only one bar on Fifth Street, why did you say corner at all? How could you people not know how corners work? Yeah, and don't lie, this town doesn't have five or more streets. <laughs> <laughs> they start counting at three to make it seem like a fancy town. <laughs> Shouldn't have named the first one Broadway. We really blew our load there. <laughs> uh, we called it next one zeroth. We look dumb. And we, just, <laughs> we want the numbers to get higher. Shit. So, okay, so the bad guy leaves. You know, he's fooled. The, 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 the girlfriend just fools him into thinking the dude's not here. It's so amazing, right? They build it up with a, like multiple flashbacks. Work? And it's basically, he just comes to the door and says, is, uh, is Dozer home? And she goes, no. <laughs> goes, oh. Okay, well, goodbye, well, forever. Bye. Yeah. First, she's like, well, uh, am I Dozer's girl? Because that's the question he asks immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right, yeah. And she's like, well, I'm not owned, you misogynist. Uh, Simon is all about the Bible now, so he's feminine. Never mind. Never mind. He's not here. He's not here, asshole. And this biker gang sergeant at arms named what the fuck's the actor's name tell me one more maverick time maverick von hogg amazing i just wanted to hear somebody say that again maverick von hogg <laughs> the the biker gang guy is like all right lady you promise you're telling the truth so you came here to simon's house he's gone and you just decide to hang out by yourself that was happening she's like yes, yes. okay bye Yep. Later. All right. Right. If you, if you find that meth, Pretty last thing, if you find that meth, just one more time, bring it, bring it over. Are we insta buddies? Let's insta connect because I don't, I don't want this to be a one time thing. I like, uh, I have a, I have here. a makeup tutorial YouTube channel. Makeup I don't know tutorial. if you can tell it my eyebrows. <laughs> you can, you can follow my insta if you want. I don't know. You want to MySpace it? So he leaves, and now Simon and the chick are sitting around, and he's going like, "Well, you know." That's almost the end of the flashback. I need to leave. And she's like, right, right. No, I get that. And he says, here, have some money. And he reaches into this giant bag of stacks of dollar bills and hands her one of those stacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cheap bastard. <laughs> it's like splitting a meal with Heath. I want you to have something. I cut, you choose. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's no cutting or choosing. I just get the food I want and you get the food you want. What are you talking about? That's what ordering is, everybody. All right, but she doesn't want his dirty biker money, apparently, right? And that's the end of the flashback again. We just, <laughs> we just stop it. there. Are we about to get yanked back to the president? Whoa! Yeah. Yep. All right, so, so now we cut back to the ginger kid 
taking Simon up to the hill upon which the bones of his ancestors are cast? So, so yeah. This is where we spread the ashes of everyone in my family who dies. Cool. That's the There's tour. No reason for that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but so but as they're heading up Ash Hill, they see a bunch of Mexicans just Mexican around on their property. <laughs> oh, and these guesses are so fucking amazing. They're like <laughs> coyotes, drug smugglers, mariachi band. <laughs> <laughs> That is the end of the list of Mexican occupations. It's yep. got to be one of those three. No? And th this is where uh, Simon is like, hey, you see you see down there? Do you know that guy? To, th to the son? And the son's like, what are you talking? Yeah, that's that's Steve. He likes to drive his truck in the middle of nowhere and stand on. No, I don't know that guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> He's holding a gun. No, yeah, he works here. He's our He's our stand on the fucking pickup truck with a rifle guy. But yeah, and they, they're like, oh, these guys must be looking for something. Because there's like five or six Mexican guys all just walking around, like, kicking bushes and shit. <laughs> and, and Simon's like, all right, be cool, be cool. Try to blend in like me, a giant gnome. Just very, <laughs> be very <laughs> He's got to lower himself down behind this fucking rock. It's, it takes like 14 minutes. It's like him backing out of that driveway at the beginning, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, and he, he turns to Simon and he says, what will they do if they find her? And I wrote in my notes, what do you think, man? They're going to induct her into Thrive. What do you think? Yeah, right. No. So, okay, so they're looking for this girl. And the the, the girl thing is amazing because because the kid says, what are they looking for, you think? And Simon puts some binoculars to his eyes and immediately sees this girl. Right? He's like, oh, it must be that girl who's very obviously right there. And Simon's looking with his binoculars. He says, where is she? He says, and I quote, you'll see her Outside that bush over there. <laughs> With the bush on the corner of Fifth Street? What the fuck are you talking about? It's all bushes. Well, she wouldn't be inside. What? what? Uh, anyway, okay. But yeah. Uh, also, question about this moment. Uh, was she taking a shit? <laughs> <laughs> the lady? She was sure, certainly in taking a shit position. Yeah. <laughs> she was. She's very taking a shit post. Okay. That's just a weird detail to have. I don't know why they would have that uh, built in and they don't like confirm or disconfirm. Anyway. I mean, she has pants on, so probably not. <laughs> um, but Oh, look at you, Mr. Judgy. Well, no, wait, no take actually, no, we do see off. that th there's a hole in her pants later. We do <laughs> see that. So, yeah, okay. Never yeah, mind. she does. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, but either, either she's taking a shit or her plan was just to squat next to that bush for a really long time and not breathe very loud. Well, this actress's whole performance is fantastic because she's playing a little girl, but she's 35. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. Mm. Yeah, so the ginger kid decides he's got to help her, right? And one way of helping her would be for the two of them to just drive up to this spot that's on their property and say, hey, what you guys doing there? This is private property. You know that, right? I'm afraid you're going to have to leave. But the other way would be for Simon to randomly shoot at them while he goes down and rescues her. <laughs> and this actor pantomiming the kickback of a rifle is my everything. <laughs> I have turned it into a GIF, and it is my screensaver. It is the background of my phone. He you ever get a high five from a little kid and go like, oh, you're so strong. That's what he's doing to the gun he's holding. <laughs> And at one point, so yeah, so he's like, like providing cover, right? By just, again, randomly firing at human beings and they have no fucking idea what these guys are doing, right? Yeah, with no discussion. That's what the son decides. He's like, yep. All right, cover me with the sniper rifle. I'm going to go rescue the lady taking a shit. Bye. And he starts <laughs> running down the hill. Yes. And Simon's just like, fuck. Ugh. I'm all, I always I end up sniping Mexican cartel soldiers all the time like this before I have time for a conversation in my nomadic life. This is It's a lot of my nomadic life in Texas. This keeps happening. So he's firing on the Mexicans. The bullets, by the way, are not hitting anywhere near where he's aiming. There's just this amazing, like, he'll fire a bullet hit to the left. The fucking squib will be to the right. He might as well fire it in the air, hit himself in the foot. But eventually the, the ginger guy makes it to the Mexican lady taking a shit. And he's like, come on, we got to go. Just fit, shh, 
finish your shit, but then be very quiet. Be very <laughs> quiet. My uh, my family runs the vigilante immigrant <laughs> hunter squad around here. I'm here to help, though, in case it wasn't clear. Yeah. You're you're um, lucky I was here hunting you. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> so they leave, right? They get on their golf cart and haul ass. And then we have this amazing fucking scene where I guess the head of the bad guy gang is sniffing Simon's shell casings like they were panties. Yeah, and he is so okay. Mexican, he's Asian. This actor really, <laughs> really, really villainous. Yeah, the Japanese man who's the leader of this Mexican yeah, cartel. Yeah, yeah. And he's <laughs> what? Who? What information is gained from smelling the empty bullet <laughs> shells, in your opinion? I was 90% sure he was getting their scent like a bloodhound. <laughs> oh, man, if he had just been like, oh, and started running down the road, the other Mexican guys are following him. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like freedom. I bet they're in Texas. <laughs> so it's that way. All right, well, now we have good guys and bad guys and a damsel in distress. It's like a full-blown plot or something. So quick, before that all starts breaking down in the very next scene, we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will we ever explore why Simon wears leather gloves everywhere he goes? Shouldn't that Mexican girl's hair at least be messy? How did this production company run out of Mexicans so early? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the expeditious conclusion of... Sons of Thunder, Episode 1. Guys, guys, it finally happened. It finally happened. Eli, for the last time, you have got to stop talking about your bathroom stuff while the mics are on. No, no, not that. Also, that didn't happen. Adam and Eve. What's Adam and Eve? Uh, Heath, it's an online adult store. And after all my letters and tweets and that one unfortunate in-person visit to their HQ, they're finally sponsoring god-awful movies. Uh, yeah, we, we apologize again for that visit, by the way. I feel like the legal settlement was apology enough, so okay. I feel like we can... Okay, well, that sounds like a great fit for our audience, but what's in it for them? Well, you can go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off with code AWFUL. Almost anything? Almost anything. Porn? Can you get porn? 50% off. Lube? 50% off. Uh, other porn? Yes, 50% off. But that's not all. all You'll also get 10 tantalizing free gifts. A sexy item for him, a special gift for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six free spicy movies, plus free shipping. So wait, people can get 50% off just about any item, plus 10 free gifts by using the code AWFUL at checkout. That's awful. Offer code A-W-F-U-L. Awful at checkout at adamandeve.com. Adamandeve.com. The best financial choice they've ever made was sponsoring our show. Still wish you hadn't done that thing at their office? It was meant to be a gift. Well, it was not. Clearly no, not. They didn't well, obviously. Find them. Uh, Sorry. Boss, I feel like you would have a Hispanic accent. You like you get out of the sketch. You're you not in the sketch. I'm, it I'm, it. I'm, 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 no, you're not. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, boss. Did you just sniff the bullet casing? Um, sniff it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Why? The bullets are fresh. Oh, I mean, I mean, I know. I, he was literally just shooting at us like seconds ago. Right. But but why? Right. Okay. So just you like. You like the smell or? You know what? I, I, I don't really feel like that's anyone's business. I... Okay. Okay. Uh, whatever you say, boss. Now bag up some of those bullets to go and we'll catch those gringos. Uh, sorry, did you say to go? Just do it. Okay. Okay. And we're back for yet more of this shit. And we're going to open back up on Simon and I guess Ginger, I'll call him, hauling ass back to the ranch to show rancher dad the lady they found. <laughs> dad, Dad, we found a Mexican lady. Can we keep her? Can we? Can she, we? Can she we? Followed can we? <laughs> me home. I'll take her for walks and everything. So they show up, and and the dad's like, "What the fuck are y'all doing with this Mexican lady?" And that very instance, the pickup truck shows up right behind him. Like it is comically on their ass. So it, it is. Lit he might as well say, "Hey, who are your friends?" <laughs> the yeah, moment they right. come in, right. <laughs> 
Yeah, and and by the way, they show up so quickly it fucks this scene all the way up, right? Like like the the scene needed them to give them another eight or nine seconds because basically the Mexican cartel guys are standing right next to him when they say we should hide in the garage before they get here. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it it needs to be like okay, the guys are coming. Everybody into the Mexico bunker that, that we have. <laughs> The what? Yeah, every Texan has a dedicated yeah, Mexican, Mexican bunker for, Mexico bunker you, you know, gunfights with you. Mexican marauders. Yeah, you just got to be ready. Marauders show up. You got to have that. a place. They might as well right? walk in going, the garage is base. Garage is base. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the guys the are already there right being like, did you guys want to get into your, you want to go into your bunker? <laughs> it's probably, you want, it's, it says Mexico bunker on it. Huh? All right. Yep. I'm going to give you all to the count of five, but that's the only head start y'all get. <laughs> So, yeah, so they they run into the garage and now like the Mexican lady, she has to explain what she's doing there. But she has to say every sentence first in Spanish, then English. Which oh, is weird. And again, you know, it's because of the Pure Flix audience, right? They like I'm sure there was a version of this episode where they tried subtitles and they were like, I'm sorry. What kind of lightning speed reader do you think I am <laughs> that I can look at a TV and then look? Down at the bottom. First of all, that's where I keep all my bowling trophies, so I can't even see those words you put down there. <laughs> Second of all, you need to keep those words up there for 10, 20, 45 minutes if you want me to follow along. They, they do try closed captioning here, though. The Pure Flix people put it in, but all they wrote was... Speaking in foreign language. Are you they serious? Didn't even, mm-hmm. They didn't even know it was Spanish. <laughs> enough to write Spanish. She's speaking some foreigner words. <laughs> yep. Speaking Mexican. So yeah. we get like her just being like Spanish, Spanish, Spanish <laughs> cartel. So they they come after me, cartel. It's so dumb. Yeah. And and the the boss guy, the the dad is like, yeah, cool story. Uh, why didn't you go to the police then, or like John Rambo or something like that? What the fuck? And he's a he's for most of this scene like suspicious of this refugee. He like he's yep. considering like maybe she she might be the bad guy. Maybe we're getting fooled here. She comes in, and the rancher's immediate response to her being attacked by men in a truck is, "What did you do?" <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, and then once she explains that it's a drug cartel and that they own the cops so that she's running for her life, he's like, all right, so we just give you to them and we'll be fine. Okay, Fantastic. all right, well, problem Excellent. solved right there. <laughs> but Simon can't do that. He's going to go out and talk them down. The dad goes, don't be foolish. And he says, is it foolish if God's on my side? And the dad goes, that is what's the opposite of subtracting from the foolishness. <laughs> he does that. I wanted so badly at this moment, right after Simon's like, it's not dumb if Jesus is on my side. Blam! Just shot right in the head. (laughs) Again, you wrote it down, so therefore that's what's going (laughs) to fucking happen. I swear. And yep, that it's not. You can't. Make jokes in, under these conditions. Yeah, exactly. And literally, I write like, oh, please get shot immediately. That'd be so funny if he gets shot immediately. He walks outside and... Goes up to the leader guy of the cartel and is like, what can I do to fix this? Nothing. I'm killing you now. Blam. And (laughs) that's what happened. He shoots him in the chest. The dude falls down and all of us wrote on our notes. Okay, if he just dies now, I love this show. I'm in for a full season. I would single handedly fund all the future seasons (laughs) of Sons of Thunder. Um, We're already in for all future seasons. Yeah, we already got Jordan Dragon King and... Agave Guatemala Maverick or whatever the Von fuck Hawk. Is. <laughs> what it oh my god they're all like super punch out characters it's amazing <laughs> also when he got shot we all rooted simultaneously for pocket bible we all have some yep, version yes. of please be saved by pocket bible please be saved by pocket bible <laughs> right but he falls down shot in the chest so rancher dad now i guess is on the mexican lady's side so he jumps out and shoots a couple of people But then the main bad guy shoots him in the head. But don't worry, though, because apparently right as he gets shot in the head, Jesus brings Simon back to life. Mm -hmm. Right. Like this guy just got shot in the chest. We never he never pulls out a Bible with a bullet in it or anything. He just gets up because ain't no bullet to the heart going to stop Simon. Yep. Nope. So he just (laughs) stands up and kicks everybody's ass. He does. Well. 
he stands up eventually. <laughs> yeah, right. And then duh, he does. He he's a former semi-professional wrestler, by the way. This actor, Ooh, as shocked. I understand, it. I am shocked. And he, <laughs> so he goes for the like slow motion choke slam here as his move. The, everything he does, it's like he's underwater. Everything <laughs> yes. that happens with this guy is underwater. Yes. And then he goes for the choke slam, but he's like. Uh, okay, too ambitious. You know what? Um, <laughs> I, uh, would, you, uh, would you like to lay down? Can we just... You know? I, I'll do a punch. All right, I'm doing a punch. <laughs> Cut. Great. And by the way, most filmmakers have the sense, if they've got an extra character in the middle of a situation like that, they have a sense to like have him get knocked out or something for a minute. But the entire time this is all going on, when his dad gets shot, when Simon gets shot, all of this other stuff... The ginger kid is standing off to the side with a rifle doing absolutely nothing to help. <laughs> he is practicing amazing trigger discipline. Uh, <laughs> he, he might as well be texting. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. He might as well be like, oh, I'm Insta buddies with that girl now. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I should just send like, hey, winky face, right? Oh, you guys got shot. Oh, all right. All right. Okay, then. What I miss. <laughs> And then, all right, so so they, they've taken out all the bad guys, apparently, uh, between that one punch and dad shooting two of them. All five of them are gone. So dad's laying on the ground, we assume dying. But no, the, he, that gunshot to the head didn't really do much damage to him because of his his nose is so stiff, it just bounces right off, apparently. <laughs> Good blogger. And then in one of the most confusing and disorienting cuts in the history of <laughs> god-awful movies, and I'm counting Nollywood shit when I say that, <laughs> we find ourselves in the exact same location at the same basic time of day, and Dad, who was just laying on the ground dying with fucking knocking on heaven's door playing, is sitting on the back of a truck talking to a sheriff that wasn't there. Nope. It is it is a shot to shot transition, right? As it's like when when an actor picks up a book and then turns around and is holding the book, except this actor was lying on the ground dying and now he is calmly explaining the situation to a sheriff we have never met. Yeah. <laughs> this might as well be like a second of snow and static just like Oh, hello. We're still <laughs> here. Like that would have made it less confusing. Uh, allow me to explain. Which of course leads me to my best worst and the best best, which is that we learn this sheriff is here because they have called the sheriff on the Mexican girl they rescued. Well, she was an illegal immigrant, <laughs> Eli. Illegal. Hello. Yeah. They literally called ICE they on did. her now. and But then they try to pretend like they they did this compassionately or something yeah, like so yes. just before you go uh, what what's ice going to do like what do you guys do with her now and they're like oh no no she's totes going to get asylum it's a super easy process you just uh, <laughs> nothing ever goes wrong they wrote into their script but she has to be patient yes because the viewpoint of this audience that they needed to cater to is, you know, most Mexican asylum seekers, they're just too darn impatient. Yep. They're just like, eh, I don't want to wait 30 days for my asylum. I might get killed by <laughs> MS-13. <laughs> Where am I right? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So, but OK, someone explain to me what the dad is fucking talking about here. Right. Because he comes up to her and he says, I think I want to be your American daddy. What, what's going on here? I have no, I, no possible <laughs> idea. First of all, she's like, thank you for saving me. And I wanted her so bad to be like, not going to lie. It was weird when you called the cops on me <laughs> right after. Like you just saw the people hunting me down to murder me. You killed all of them. And then, and then you called the cops on me. Seems so weird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, we, I, I don't think we can be clear enough about the fact that Simon and dad are both completely over their bullet wounds now. Like, yep, totally fine. <laughs> that evening. <laughs> and apparently also like they adopt her. <laughs> I don't understand this moment. Yeah. 
what was the point? Because he asks, like, uh, how's is your father a good father, I guess? And I loved actually before he even asks her anything, he, he asks the ICE agent. He's like, all right, I know you like we put we called you to take her away. Can I talk to her? No, I had I thought of something just now. One more thing. And the guy's like, all right, I she's already in the truck. Can we fine? All right. We're going to take her back out of the truck so you can do a little speech. Fine. Fine. And he asked her, like, is your Mexican father any good? And she's like, no, he's broken. He's like, <laughs> cool, that's what I figured. I figured you would say he's broken. Uh, I'm your white father now. You are set for life. <laughs> what the fuck was that? End of story. <laughs> so, yeah. No so idea. He, he wants her to know that since her dad's just a poor Mexican, he can be her American dad and everything will be fine. So he walks away. Uh, we see it, by the way, th at this point, that there is some blood on his ear. So he did take some damage from that bullet to the head from eight <laughs> fucking inches away. You know, he's, a, he's like completely unharmed. Got me right in the lobe. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> And then he calls his son over. He's like, hey, son, come here for just a second. I know I told you we shouldn't save Mexicans, but it turns out that once in a while, if it's a lady, that's OK. I've now had a moral arc. I believe my character's <laughs> done now, right? Now get the fuck back to work. <laughs> he, did, he totally does. He so totally gives him a get back to fucking work. Think that was clear what I was saying, Rudyard Kipling. Great stuff. Go yes. fucking hay the cows. Good. <laughs> and then we clumsily cut back into that flashback. And I have to say, why the fuck wasn't this where that clumsy ass transition was, right? <laughs> we could have left dad laying on the ground, bleeding out, put a little suspense there, gone and finished this and then come back for all that. But the dumbasses making this fucking movie didn't think of that. So now we're going to end to that flashback, which, by the way, ends with nothing happening. Yeah, she just uh, the the background extra from Saved by the Bell Two Electric Boogaloo is like you know, it's not in you believe in Jesus, but you don't That's believe stupid. in Jesus. You have you have thirty days to find Jesus. Then I'm getting back on Tinder. That's <laughs> fucking like she's trying to say like you know, faith in God doesn't mean becoming an idiot nomad gunfighter, biker, whatever odd job fucking thing you've decided you're going to do. And he's like, yeah, I hate to argue with you, babe, during the big morality moment, but yes, it does. Yes, that it is does. what faith <laughs> in God means. Actually, or else this really, entire the whole show premise, doesn't make sense. We don't We're doing have a show else, about really. that. You're being you, a bitch. I didn't have any gamma <laughs> radiation Saved by the Bell 2 electric so. boogaloo was stupid. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right. So now we go back into the present moment. It, we, basically, we, we cut back into that flashback just long enough for her to tell him that she will fuck other dudes eventually. And then we got back into the present moment where he's saddling up his steed, ready to head out on more adventures. <laughs> I love this moment. The, the son runs up to him. He says, here you go. Here's your pay. Dad decided to give you a little extra. And he goes, I don't need it. Why don't you donate that extra money to that Mexican lady's attorneys? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Use this extra like fifty dollars to get her some amazing immigration attorney. Yes. that'll do it. Right. Well, it, I love so much too. Once again, just they they don't understand how demonic they are in this moment where they've you know where they're highlighting the fact that like yeah sure she can claim asylum but she's gonna have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're sending her to a concentration camp with some folding money to go to the PX, <laughs> get sandals, maybe, I don't know, whatever you like, candy. <laughs> yeah, so he's about to leave. Maybe a silver blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's he goes to leave. Simon goes to leave. And the rancher dad turns to him and gives him this whole, you know, I've learned something here today speech that ends in the whitest pronunciation of mi casa, su casa, that not only has ever occurred, but can <laughs> ever occur. Okay, He pronounces that sentence like me trying to spell missile casing. <laughs> <laughs> mi oh. casa is su casa. Yeah. Have all <laughs> the casas. I want you to have them. <laughs> and and then we close on a beautiful, uh, also nonsense title drop to close it here. Like, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I love that it, it, he says again to like repeat himself. He's like, so yeah, well, like I was saying before, God's plan pretty much never makes sense in my life so far. I don't. <laughs> End of thought. I'm a son of thunder. I am a son of thunder. Doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Uh, if, if you see thunder, tell him he owes me child support. <laughs> we technically don't owe amc any money for this it's thunder it's different it's a title you can't we are about anarchy but all right well i'm gonna go ahead and say it this show has potential it's not quite there but it has potential and we need more episodes for job security reasons and shit so let's fix it to make this show work what talking animal or anthropomorphized object does fucking zz slop need for a sidekick uh ooh. Uh talking sombrero. Get with it, people. Come on. <laughs> okay. I was gonna suggest something, but I definitely switched my vote preemptively to talking sombrero. Talking sombrero, thank you. I I mean just like an anthropomorphized his faith somehow built into a thing. But no, okay. so maybe <laughs> I, I think the I think that I think we have the same answer actually. It's talking sombrero. Okay, so there you go. I was gonna say there is an apocryphal book of the Bible where there's a giant talking crucifix. So I thought maybe that. Or how about this? How about like a single diabetes? <laughs> right? They can hang out with him little, like it's on his shoulder or something. All right, well that's gonna <laughs> Wilfred Brimley's floating head. Yeah. <laughs> his own foot. <laughs> he he's the voice of the talking sombrero. He's in the sombrero. Oh, he talks to the sombrero. Oh, oh yeah. Wilfred Brimley's yeah. face. Well, or maybe yeah. just his mustache. Right. The, well, the, the sombrero definitely has to have a mustache. Stop All here. Right. I have to pee again. Fuck. <laughs> David A.R. White, call us, I guess. <laughs> Wilford Brimley's foot. It's missing. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Sons of Thunder episode one, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to add more straws, apparently. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, you're off next week, so Heath and I will be watching Prayer of the Roller Boys, which <laughs> is a Christian movie. It is. Well, because it has prayer in the title. Because it has prayer in the title. It has an also, it's oh. about an apocalypse, culty gang. All it's right. very, very religious. Christian. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 239 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions you can email god awful movies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of p andrew torres tim robson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by ryan slot of biblical drafts on mars although the music was written and performed by our audio engineer morgan clark and was used with permission thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week for heath enright and eli bosnick i'm no illusions promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week until then we'll leave you with the breakfast club clubs i am also a son of thunder but my story has Nothing about hunting human beings, so those are unrelated. Simon's motorcycle went on to be surgically removed from his ass at some point. Juan, the talking sombrero, would go on to sacrifice his life for Simon in the season finale. Q sees you again. Q see you again. You guys don't get it. Vin Diesel loved Paul Walker. <laughs> <laughs> loved him. You should, you should sing it, though. Be radically vulnerable with you guys. I forgot that we didn't, that you guys didn't join in on three, and I was feeling really self conscious by the time I got to four. <laughs> I don't know why. I was just expecting you guys to jump in on three, and I was like, what are, why are you guys fucking. <laughs> Sons of Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.